uh, Naples, Italy in the background there. I was gonna say a couple words about Naples, Italy, but uh, I've learned my lesson. Thank goodness the mayor of Naples hasn't showed up at my door yet. It is Sunday, January 31st, 2021, and on this week's edition of Sunday Sofa Time, I'm gonna show you the smallest cruise ship cabin I have ever visited. All right, everybody, here we are again, and uh, you know, it was weird to say 2021. I had to think for a second, 2021, is that right? But yes, it is 2021, it's January's almost over, I've still got something happening here, and I am still not done bringing you some never-before-seen cruise ship videos from my cruise on the MSC Grandiosa, which was just in November of last year. Feels like a really long time ago right now, but yeah, it was... November. By the way, even though most parts of Europe are still on a pretty strict lockdown, including Germany, we're back at the level where only grocery stores, pharmacies, doctor's offices, and restaurants offering food to go are open. Things like clothing stores, hair salons, gyms, swimming pools, all closed, not allowed at the moment, and non-essential travel is highly discouraged. And it's weird, it doesn't mean that you can't, but you're really not supposed to, and at the moment, I am not. But what I wanted to say is, MSC is still cruising. The Grandiosa just started a cruise after a short break on the 25th, so just a couple days ago. And when I looked at the website uh, as I was preparing for this video, technically, if I wanted to, I could book an MSC cruise next week, but I'm not going to. And all that is not what you're here for. You're here because the title of the video is Tiny Cruise Ship Cabin or something like that, and that's what we're gonna look at in just a few seconds. And as always, I'm probably gonna go off on a ton of different tangents, so if you're just here to see the ship itself, here, that's the time you need to skip to. I can already see the comments now. Get to the point! When I booked this cruise back in November, I booked a balcony cabin, a standard balcony cabin. And, uh, you know, one of the nice things about booking a cruise on MSC and many other cruise lines is you can pay for the opportunity to pick exactly what cabin you stay in. And I thought it would be interesting to switch it up a little bit and stay in the aft of the ship, the very back of the ship overlooking you know, the the wake of the ship and the sun going down over the horizon. We've only stayed in a cabin back there one time before on the Disney Dream in a very large balcony cabin. And I was happy to be able to get a cabin at the back of the ship. And as far as I knew, it was a standard balcony cabin just at the back. Well, fast forward to me entering the cabin and you'll see there was a slight misunderstanding here. So the moment you've been waiting for for the past like 20 minutes, let's look inside the cabin. The hallway you're seeing here, that is the back of the ship. So I'm looking across as, as wide as the ship is basically. And this was the very last cabin over on the side, on the, uh, yeah, starboard side, 13376. And uh, yeah, I open the door here and that's it. That is the entire cabin. So uh, when I close the door, I move back and basically put my back against the door. So I'm like as far back as I can get. And you can see the entire cabin here. It's the couch is made into two bunk beds. There's the balcony door right there. There's a tiny little desk and that's it. Here it is with my back against the balcony. And like I said, I mean, there isn't a couch. It's been made, it's been, you know, like a transformer made into these two bunk beds and there's nothing else in the cabin. It's like just big enough for these bunk beds. One interesting thing to note was that the bathroom was I want to say even larger than the cabin that I ended up getting, and it had a bathtub, which was just strange to me. So the normal size uh, cabins don't have a bathtub. This one did. And another thing that was slightly bigger about this cabin was the actual balcony. So here you can see 
a, you know, a view of the balcony and that's uh, Naples, Italy in the background there. I was gonna say a couple words about Naples, Italy, but uh, I've learned my lesson. Thank goodness the mayor of Naples hasn't showed up at my door yet. But you can see this is looking out the back of the ship and that is the balcony and it is, it's actually quite a big balcony and definitely bigger than the one on the normal size cabin that I moved into. Before we go into a little more detail about what the website says about this cabin and how I ended up booking it and all that, please forgive me for putting a little commercial break right here. If you got one, what was it about? Now, when I originally mentioned this cabin and show it in my the first video of being on board, uh, I just showed a little bit of the cabin and not everything I just showed you now, many people hit the comments, you know, like I'm usually thankful for, and, uh, you know, said they were also surprised and they also would not be happy if that happened to them. And some people wrote that if you look at the MSC website, it's clearly listed that this room has bunk beds. And so it was my fault for the confusion. But if we look at the MSC website, I want to ask you the question if maybe you would have thought the same thing that I thought. So here you can see the MSC website. This is deck 13. Here's the cabin 13, uh, 376. And it has these two, uh, these two dots in it. So if we go down here and look at what the two dots mean, it says bunk bed or sofa that can be converted into bunk bed, third and fourth beds. Now, yes, it does say bunk bed there, but as somebody who's been on 20 cruises now, I was assuming that what that meant was, in addition to a normal bed, there is also a bunk bed in this cabin. I was thinking there's a normal bed and then the couch can turn into a bunk bed because I've seen on other cruises, on other cabins, how actually I've never seen a sofa that like got pulled up into two bunk beds. What I've seen was a sofa that turns into a bed and then another bed that like flips down out of the ceiling. But I have never seen a cruise ship cabin with just a bunk bed. So please tell me, is, should I have, am I the one who am to blame for this mistake? I, I think this needs to be phrased differently. I, I don't think this is clear. I'm not saying that this is a bad cabin and that they shouldn't exist. However, I don't think they should be offered to people booking a standard balcony cabin. This should be like a studio balcony or budget balcony or something like this. Do you agree? Just to keep it real, if we scroll down a little bit further, there is a further description of different cabins here. It says, Single cabin with reduced size bed. Reduced size bed is 140 by 200. This ship offers many family cabins, which are the combination of two or more connected cabins. Offered from one you know, I don't need to read this out loud to you. I know you can read it without me reading it out loud, but then down here at the very bottom, it does say cabins. And then you can see 13376 have only bunk bed, but I'm still going to go out on a limb and say they should make it a little bit clearer here because when you're booking a cruise cabin and the deck plan shows up and it's all these different cabins that you could pick, I want to say when I hover the mouse over 13376, that's where then, that's where that information about it only being a cabin with a sofa bed in it and no other bed, before I even click on and get close to reserving the cabin, that's where that information needs to be. It shouldn't be, you know, two entire scrolled pages down here at the very bottom with no direct link back up to where you actually choose the cabin. You know what I mean? Yes, the information is there, but is it clear and undeniably connected to where the actual business takes place? I'm gonna say no. By the way, y'all, before I forget, I also got the chance to tour an inside cabin, the cabin directly across from 
the cabin that I ended up moving into. I haven't put that video footage online yet, so keep watching. Maybe for Sunday Sofa Time next week, we'll look at that cabin as well. That cabin, by the way, bigger than the cabin we just looked at. Yeah, in case you didn't see the videos all in the order, I ended up going down to guest relations and I was very polite and I asked if it would be possible to move to a traditional standard size balcony cabin. And after a little bit of back and forth and waiting for telephone calls and not being there when they called and then not being able to reach the person who had called, later that night I ended up moving into just a fine old balcony cabin, and that was the cabin I stayed in then for the cruise. Even though I didn't even sleep one night in that other cabin, I still left, I think, a 20 euro tip for the cabin steward because it shouldn't be his fault that the cruise line you know, made that mistake and then one passenger from his section moved out. So I just thought it was fair to him and I left him a tip anyways. I hope they found that. And I don't know what else to say about that other than I found out from a lot of information from you and from going back and looking at the, uh, the cabin or the deck plans here that what those cabins actually are is they're not really supposed to be offered as a separate cabin. They are the add-on to the family suites or family cabins. So the cabin next to that is, you know, like a standard balcony cabin. And then you can book like this add-on to it. And if you look at the symbols here, those are the cabins with this little white divider here. So that's technically one big cabin or they close the door and offer it to gullible people like me for the same price as a normal cabin. And now, after all that's been said, comes the time on Sunday Sofa Time where I comment on your comments live on air. In last week's Sunday Sofa Time, we went into a little more detail about what is offered in the MSC Yacht Club. So that's what we talked about on Sunday Sofa Time last week, and these comments are on that video. The first one is from Queetbeat. Queetbeat writes, I love Sunday Sofa Time Live. I enjoy interacting with you and the community, but dot dot dot, I also love pre-recorded sofa time because you're such a great storyteller. I feel like I was right there with you by the end. A balance of both would be awesome. What Queetbeat is referring to is from like the end or middle of November until the end of the year, I was doing live sofa times that were taking around an hour where I, yeah, I don't, you know, they took an hour. And it was a chance for me to answer questions and comments live and be a little bit more interactive than how these recorded sofa times are. And then it just got to the point where it was time to start doing these pre-recorded ones again. I will be doing more live. I, even, I really miss it by now, uh, but I don't have a schedule or a plan. However, the software that I use to do the live streaming is something I'm paying for every month. So I just realized I need to be doing them every month or it was a silly idea to pay for this software. Next comment is from Daniel Fields. Daniel writes, on NCL you have a butler as well when in the Haven. They give you a mobile phone for the ship and you can call him or her, I'm assuming, from anywhere. It's hardly used, but it's available. And that does sound really nice. However, the idea that somebody's job is to just be sitting around waiting for me to call them and ask them to do something for me, it just makes me uncomfortable. I still, that's not a selling point for me. What about you? Final comment is a big one from George B. And before I read this, uh, I tried to make it clear in the video from last week that this was just my impression of what was offered after touring the area and not having stayed in there. I did talk about that, uh, but just wanted to say that in advance before I read here what George B wrote. Let's cut, cut to the chase here on what you get for the money. Butler service on and off the ships in all ports, express elevator service, upgraded areas on Ocean Key with on-site dining, private dining room with upgraded linen and porcelain plating, flexible dining schedule, time with the captain on the VIP event, upgraded in-room furnishing, including Egyptian cotton bedding and towels, drink package throughout the ship, which was something I wasn't sure about when I made that video because on, I think it's on Royal Caribbean, when you stay in the suite class, the drink package is only included in the suite area, at least that's 
how it sounds, how it's worded on the website. Upgraded liquor in the lounge, live music in the two-story lounge, private pool, oh, I think George means private pool, with upgraded buffet, buffet with cook-to-order steak and lobster, per ordered specialty items with dining rooms such as lobster thermidor, snack and desserts in private lounge, and comp specialty pizza, or wait, <laughs> if you watch my video about Zoe, the virtual assistant, I know I should say speciality pizza. In stateroom, VIP spa access, and formal high tea, among other things. So you do get quite a lot for the money. I totally agree. Though you miss full dining room service like on Royal and the other Main Street, I think George means main cruise lines there, uh, let alone real luxury lines. So no, MSC is not the Queen's Grill on Cunard. Yeah, I, I tried to go into that in the video to say that there are a lot of things that you do get offered. And then, you know, it's up to everybody to decide if these are things that are worth the money or things that you would actually, you know, use or that are of value to you. And even when I go through this list, this much more detailed list that George B wrote here, I still think, you know, most of those things are things that I'm not really gonna use. So I still stand by what I said in the video last week. And if you wanna know what that was, go watch it. Thank you everybody for spending another part of your weekend with me or whenever you watch this. And I'll see you next week. <laughs>